Everyone knows Sylvester Stallone from the movies such as Rocky or Rambo, but nowadays not that many can recall all the other movies, especially in 1993's Demolition Man. And it's a great movie in the sense of how it predicted the future. Electric cars, dumbed down language, Zoom meetings, Arnold becoming a politician. The Schwarzenegger Library? Yes, the Schwarzenegger Presidential Library. Total attention spans and so much more. But what really bothered me is how cryopreservation preservation was portrayed. But it's the most important aspect of the movie. For all the non-boomers or for those who haven't jumped on the Wikipedia, here's what happened in the movie. In 1996, LA is a regular LA, hosting a lot of crime lords, thugs, and one of them being Simon Phoenix. In the opening scene, Phoenix kidnaps hostages and held them in an abandoned building. LAPD Sergeant John Spartan, nicknamed Demolition Man, goes after him without any authorization. Spartan doesn't see any signs of hostages in the building, so he raids the building and confronts Phoenix, who then sets off the explosives to destroy it. But there were hostages and sadly their corpses are later found in the rubble. Phoenix claims that Sparta knew about them and attacked anyway. So both of them are taken into the city's new California Cryo Penitentiary or Cryo Prison, a facility in which convicts are held in cryo preservation. The full name of the prison can either be cryonic prison or cryogenic prison. We can't say. The movie does not use either of those terms. But it's a common misconception that there is no difference between these two terms. Cryogenics is a scientific study of production of low temperatures and cryonics is the science of cryopreserving the human body. So close in theory, but completely different in practice and fields of research. And if you don't know yet what cryopreservation or cryonics is, we got you. You can always book a free consultation with us and get all the answers. Check out the link in the description. So, after hearing the sentence, the guards undress Spartan and begin the cryopreservation process. We do also undress our patients and have them completely naked to start the procedure, as in any surgical procedure. But we'll get back to the surgical stuff very soon. The main difference to the reality is that Spartan is still alive. We only do the cryopreservation procedure when the patient is legally pronounced dead. For various reasons, including legal ones. After flexing his muscle and attitude for the involuntary manslaughter of 30 innocent civilians. Spartan receives a bone injection. In our case, we also use bone injection and we give drugs which prevent blood clot formation but also prime the body for perfusion. During the stabilization procedure, we inject a mixture of sodium citrate and heparin. These prevent blood clot formation. But we also use neuroprotective drugs like mannitol, which prevents the brain from swelling. I assume they're also using something similar here because, well, it's hard to fight crime when your brain is a mush. Spartan is then sentenced to 70 years of crime preservation. During that, his behavior will be altered with something called synaptic suggestion, which I assume is taking place where neurons connect and communicate. So, some sort of brain rewiring. There is some research on altering synapses, but you can't do that in cryopreservation. When your body is in a vitrified state, there is zero activity in no shape or form. To alter someone's brain, it needs to be at least somewhat active. And in that case, it ages and ruins itself in the process. Basically, there's almost no biological activity at such temperatures. The body and every cell is in a state of pause, so nothing can happen at this point. After this, Spartan is put into the cryonics chamber while his body is in a weird position and submerged in liquid nitrogen, I assume. First of all, we put the patients in a cryonics door in a fixed, straight standing position, but we also do not pour liquid nitrogen onto the patients or immediately place them in liquid nitrogen. Before they are put into the door, they are perfused with the cryoprotective agent to protect the cells and tissues during the cool down process. And then they are placed in a cool down chamber and cooled to seven to 10 days before placement into a door. We do this to make sure there's as little damage as possible to the cells and tissues, as well as cool down gradually to reduce ice formation. Then the scientists take some plot device out of the secure container, and freeze the liquid nitrogen, while well, Spartan's body tissues are damaged beyond repair, and there is little to no hope for revival. Skip forward to the year 2023. Phoenix gets out of prison, and due to the incompetence of the future police in the matters of handling hard criminals, they need a hard cop. So, Lieutenant Lenin and Huxley suggest freeing Spartan and reinstating him to active duty. Meanwhile, Spartan is still frozen solid and still in a weird position. In our case, we place the patient in the doer filled with liquid nitrogen, but they are placed upright, straight, and in a cross-armed position. But they also place upside down. This is to avoid damaging the head first in case of missing liquid nitrogen refill, which is very unlikely, but still possible. Now, the next part gets a bit complicated because we haven't figured out how to do it. By that, I mean how to safely get people back from cryo preservation. So keep that in mind. It's all assumptions from now on. Spartan is being cut out of the ice block, but still, his body needs to be rewarmed internally. And most importantly, they need to fix his cells and tissues. But I guess they do it in one minute or so. But even after such stress on the body, he's fine after some time. So I assume no brain damage or muscle damage. Spartan does not like the future he's in, and he hesitates to cooperate. Uh, smoking is not good for you, and has been deemed that anything not good for you is bad, hence illegal. Alcohol, caffeine, contact sports, meat. Are you shitting me? Bad language, chocolate, gasoline, uneducational toys, and anything spicy. Abortion is also illegal, but then again, so is pregnancy if you don't have a license. Now, 
Whether the future will be more utopian than dystopian, well, that is up for debate. I believe the future will be more utopian. So, while the Demolition Man future might not seem that appealing, having no crime and focusing on the progression and well-being of society, well, that is what I consider utopian. But also, let me know in the comments what you think the future would look like. For Spartan, vengeance seems way more important than getting back into that ice cube. I wouldn't go through that procedure either. It's lucky that he's alive after this. After that, he somehow reinstates himself into the future society. Skipping forward through some major plot lines, Phoenix gets the upper hand. He and his partners in crime are trying to get the other prisoners out of the cryo prison. We're once again introduced to the plot device cylinder. I don't know what that blue pebble is, but it seems like something which triggers freezing. After Spartan breaks the cylinder, the solution spreads to the surface, freezing Phoenix. In reality, ice does not spread like that. Usually, you need an initial nucleation point, and also, not everything contains water. Even if there's water everywhere, it needs to be at the right temperature around 0 degrees for it to be triggered to become ice. But here is what Demolition Man gets right. How the frozen body would handle itself. Not that robust. How Phoenix's head breaks is very accurate. Once someone is frozen, they are very fragile. The same goes with vitrification. In the glass-like amorphous stage, you are pretty fragile and care is given to make sure no cracking happens. That's why once again, during the cooldown, it's very slow and takes around 7 to 10 days so that you can avoid thermal stress which would cause cracking. If the authors knew about vitrification, they would have made a much more realistic depiction of the future technology. The technology was already there by that time, although more different than what it is now. But it's a 90s movie, so you gotta enjoy what you have. But if you want to know more about vitrification and why it's not freezing, check out this video or any other video on this channel if you want to learn more about cry preservation.